And I'm always interested in something approaching or disappearing, where something moves just outside your ability to capture it, so that you want to follow it. What is just around the corner? What is just out of grasp? What is just at the periphery of what you can see and comprehend and feel? I don't know why I'm so fascinated by that, but that seems to be the case. I was not a disciplined artist when I began. Within a, a year or two, I had to force myself to a very strong discipline. And the way I had to do it was to get up very early every morning and work constantly for a few hours. And I had to do it every single day without fail, no matter how difficult it was. It's with anything in life. You have to discipline yourself if you want to engage with it in a deep sort of way, which I do. I'm working with a resin that is a urethane, a particularly demanding material. It goes through a chemical reaction as soon as it is mixed, so I have to work within time constraints. These particular sculptures, which are meant to dissolve at the edges, have 14 or 15 separate layers. There may be 50 or 60 specific steps for each layer of resin. It's very important to be laser focused every second without interruption. There's no erasing, there's no going back. If I'm a little too slow and the chemical reaction is beginning to take place, the entire piece will be ruined. Somewhere in my 20s, I spent seven or eight years away from Southern California in graduate schools and a number of other endeavors. When I came back, I realized in a very stark moment how powerful the pull of this place was. It is really in my bones. I was at the coast and I took long walks on the beach. I was fascinated with the water, the transparency, the translucencies, even slight opacities. I began to do early explorations with oil paint at first, and got into resins. There are all kinds of resins. There are polyester resins, there are epoxies. Some of these materials had been used in the military in World War II. They were declassified, and artists found them all at once and they were supposed to be used in very tiny amounts. And of course, no one used them that way. Along the way, for a couple of years, I was the resident artist at Caltech. And I thought this will be great because I can talk to those chemical engineers about these materials and find out everything I need to know. What I really found out was that most of them, theoretical scientists, were not particularly interested in any practical application of the materials. The head of the chemistry department finally said, Helen, you're on your own. You're doing something with these materials that is not something we understand. You're using them in very strange ways for your own reasons. You're on your own. It was a time of exploration. And I had to learn to live with failure because it happens a lot. I think you learn from your failures. I don't think you learn from your successes. So many people have asked me if I was conscious of the other line space artists working in the middle 60s. They were all in Venice. They were all men. <laughs> I got to know Jack Brogan. He was a technical artist 
who taught me how to polish the surfaces and how to sand. So every day, for a long time, I commuted to Venice, to his studio, and there I met all the rest of the other artists. I was fascinated by what the others were doing, but I was very shy during those years, and I was so focused on my work that I was already on a course of my own. There was one point in 1971 when Eddie Dale, Robert Irvin, and myself had shows that opened in New York exactly the same time. It was the worst blizzard in 50 years. No one saw them for at least two or three weeks. And then the New York critics found them. They said, these three California artists are showing in these various places. And they said, it's all, um, it's all terrible. They said it was terrible work. It was all about air and atmosphere. It was nothing. It, they even went so far in one of the reviews to say that it just shows that they've, you know, been in the sun too much. There were lots of critics that said lots of things. I don't think any of the artists paid much attention. <laughs> These works are about an affirmation of this place. They are really landscapes and seascapes. They are about making the invisible visible. These pieces are so challenging, but they're so exciting. They propel me forward of their own volition. I can hardly wait to get to the studio to work on them. I can hardly wait until they're finished. I never get bored with it.